As she gazed across the open fields and hilly landscape beyond the village, she smiled at the sight of sheep and cattle roaming freely in the tall grass. Even the wind seemed different here, scented with heather and other fragrances born from the carpet of pink and purple wildflowers that covered the land. Durness was not a principal village, but the thatched roof cottages were clean and welcoming, windows facing the water. The market bustled with merchants and craftsmen, each competing for the attention of passers-by. Her only trunk had been safely set aside on the dock, meant to be claimed by whatever Mackay kinsman had been sent to collect her. Until that time, she intended to explore the village, for she had been deprived of freedom all her life. She reached under her wool cloak and checked for the leather bag of coins Anne had sewn there. When her fingers met the soft material, she breathed a sigh of relief. "'Twas money Callie's mum had given her to save, so that one day she might have something for herself. "'Dreams are more than a lass's fanciful thoughts,' her mother had often said. "'It takes silver to make them come true.' Until this moment, Callie had never realised her dreams, other than keeping her sisters together and safe. She sniffled at the thought of them alone in that house with their sire, but there was nothing she could do from here. Curious at the wares she might find in the market, she sauntered toward the first booth, where fresh meat pies and small loaves of bread were on display. Her mouth watered, weeks of food deprivation finally catching up with her. Aye, she could eat a horse if offered one, but she'd settle on the golden-crusted delicacy before her. What is this one? she asked softly to the man smiling at her. Mutton and turnips, he said. Would ye like one? Two or three, actually. Aye. She gave him a copper coin and welcomed the warmth of the pastry in her hands. As she began walking again, she bit into the soft goodness, flavour exploding on her tongue. When she finished eating, she was thirsty and sought a cup of cider or watered-down ale. Found at another stall, she chose cider and drank it down. She noticed bolts of colourful fabric, a smithy shop, and just about anything one might want to buy. There was even a place where men were looking over sheep and horses, which intrigued her. Whether because of the wee beasties, or how the men chattered together, she didn't know. Though the place was noisy, peace surrounded her, and she took a deep, satisfying breath. Carly Elizabeth Bain? a low voice asked. She cringed, expecting a heavy hand to yank her around, for that's what her father would have done had he found her wandering about. When nothing happened, she risked a glance over her shoulder and found a sombre-looking man, devastatingly handsome, who seemed taller than a house. His green eyes searched her face for something she couldn't guess. I am Callie Bain, she confessed, and the man nodded. I am Adam Mackay, here to fetch ye.